I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month's trial of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be talking about inline anchor styles, steady scrolling, the web speech API, and more. Let's check it out. First up is inline anchor styles. Now, if you've ever styled a link, which you probably Haven't. have, because it's such a common element, you know that links are by default an inline element. They're not a block level element. So it can look a little bit plain if you just leave the default underline and the default color. So it's nice to have a few different styles for your inline links. And that's exactly what this code drop article has. So if we scroll down, you can see a couple of different examples of what these look like. So far, it just looks like a normal underline, but if we this hover over- This is just over, an everyday website. Whoa, what happened whoa, there? What? what just happened? Hi, we, we, we're on the website of the future. That's what happened. If we hover over these, whoa, what? look at that. It's animated, that is insane. They're using CSS transitions is to make this a make website this or a big budget movie? Look Hollywood that. blockbuster. Amazing. There's a few more here, kind of like this particular style where it kind of zooms out of the page and has some nice rounding on the corners, some border radius. There's a few more. Let's just look at these. Not a whole lot to say about it, but it's just pretty cool to have a bunch of different styles here. There's one more down here. I think it's, let's see, this one. Nope. There's quite a few of them here. What? Look at that. There what? we go. Wow. So when you hover over, it actually shows the link that it's going to. Now, this is more common in print style sheets when you actually want to show the full URL for a link, but you could do it here as well if you want to know where that link is going to before you click on it. Is this a 2D website or a 3D video game? Amazing. That Pretty is cool amazing. Stuff. But that's about it. So, Really felt like you were in your element scrolling down that page. We're really in line with one another today. You are reading my mind. Next up, we have a project called Steady.js. Steady.js is a piece of Java, JavaScript words that you can use to have performant scrolling with media queries. Let's check out this, this website right here. It describes the project as a jank free module to do logic on the on scroll event without performance regressions in media query-like conditions. Now, this is going to be more important when you're on a mobile device where doing something like like hanging something onto the scroll event, every time you scroll the web page, if you have too many events, it could cause performance degradation. When you use this library, it takes the performance and makes it use request animation frame so it will seem much smoother. Now, as you would expect from pretty much anything we feature on this show, there are a bunch of different options. So you can specify different conditions for when you do want these on scroll events to happen. So you're not calling too many things at a time and you can remove the conditions, add the conditions and even add different trackers. Now, there are a ton of different options. I recommend you check this plugin out in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Also, search for us in iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. And don't forget to sign up for a free 30-day trial at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Next up is Voice Elements. This is a project that uses web components in combination with the Web Speech API. Now, the Web Speech API allows for audio to come out of the computer as spoken text. It's, it's pretty cool. It's synthesized text. And Web Components is basically a way for you to create your own HTML elements that combine a couple of different ones together. Now, I'm going to... We've, we've talked about Web Components on the Treehouse Show before, so make sure to catch up on old episodes. We have. So, pretty amazing stuff. And then Web Components packages it all up into the uh, voice player element here. So See that right here. So, conceivably, your computer could talk to you. That is right. So if I refresh the page here. Welcome to the jungle. Ha ha ha, just kidding. Welcome to the voice elements demonstration page. Wow, that website just talked to us. You can install this using Bower. I'm actually going to scroll down to the bottom of the page here before we talk about this 
anymore. Usage is to import the web components polyfill. So you can do that. And then you import the custom elements. So there's a voice player element here. And then there is a voice recognition element. So this project also allows you to do voice recognition. And then you can use it using the voice player and voice recognition elements here. Those are web components. So if I scroll back up here, you can see that there is a voice player actually on this page and it read the text that we have here. And right here, there's another demo that uses JavaScript and attaches an event listener. So when you click this button, it will actually talk in Spanish. So that's pretty cool. And then down here, you can actually type in your own text and make it speak. So I'm going to type in the Treehouse show is amazing. LOL, Nick. The Treehouse show is amazing. LOL, Nick. So pretty good. Uh, further down, we have a couple of options here. You can specify an accent. So for example, you could have an English US accent or an English Great Britain accent. There's a couple more methods here. You can make it speak, pause, Jason resume. is using the website too. And down here we have voice recognition. And if you click start here and then you click allow, it should actually recognize my speech. I might have to click start again. It should actually recognize our speech. The Treehouse Show is the most amazing show in the entire world. And it may or may not. Oh, there we go. So it takes a second. And the, speak, the speech recognition is actually pretty good. Uh, you have to speak somewhat clearly, but uh, generally it works pretty well. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the Voice Elements project. Pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. pretty I always cool wanted stuff. my website to talk to me. I think they should implement that on any site that allows comments and have it read the comments to you. Or you should have voice recognition comments. Yes. Yes. Wow. They will be perfectly clear every time. The future is today. Next up, we have a project called JS Nice. This is a project that deobfuscates JavaScript. So if you have JavaScript that you want to see what it actually does because it has been compressed and or minified, you can paste it in here and click this Niceify JavaScript. Niceify is a real word, word. And then over on the right side, you will see the deobfuscated JavaScript. This is going to be something that is useful if you are trying to learn from a website. Maybe you've got some JavaScript, you want to see exactly how it works, and the source code has been minified. Great opportunity to learn from it. Go ahead and check out the JS Nice project. It's actually called JS Nice. When I first saw the domain, I thought it was JS and Ice, which would be our hip hop group name. Coming soon. Next up is. You'd be Ice, because I'm, I'm Jason. That makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Next up is this Sketch tutorial. Now, if you haven't used Sketch, it's basically an app that allows you to draw some shapes and create mock ups for. Uh, for interfaces. Now, Sketch is a little bit different than using Photoshop or Illustrator, but this tutorial does a really nice job of introducing how to use a lot of the different features by creating this particular icon. So it's sort of a colorful switch here, and this could be used as, say, an iOS icon. And if we scroll down here, it walks through the installation, how to make an artboard, save a color, and then if we scroll down a little further here, it shows you how to start actually drawing out the shapes that you're going to need. And then after you have the base shapes in place with your colors, you can go ahead and start filling things in. So there's a gradient being filled into this circle here. And further down, it should show you how to make a bevel. There it is right there. And there's a couple of differences between Sketch and other programs like Photoshop and Illustrator, and this tutorial just does a really great job of 
pointing out exactly how to do some of these features that you might already be familiar with in uh, another drawing application. So it also goes through, I think, shadows and a couple of other common features that you might already be familiar with but are a little bit different in Sketch. So many, so many designers are using Sketch these days. It's definitely worth learning. So many. Much designers. Next up, we have a project called jQuery Match Heights. This is a jQuery plugin that will allow you to give a group of elements matching height, which makes for nicer layouts. Let's go ahead and take a look at a demo right here. Here are a ton of elements that we have on the page, and you'll notice that they all have the same height because they are using the jQuery Match Height plugin. You can see we can click Remove Match Height, and oh, look at that. This does not look good anymore. I don't even want to be on this website because the boxes are not equal heights. Ugh. Ugh, I know. Now you can specify different things to match the height by or take into account. Let me reload the page here so we can continue to get the height matched. You can see with padding, with margin. Oh, wow, no, we don't want a margin. Yes, we do. Use borders. Don't use borders. Use border box. Hey, no, we'll do this by row. So anyway, this plugin is very, very easy to use. Um, you, can resize, you can match the heights by row. You can, it's also responsive, which is quite wonderful. So this is a great plugin. It's not as heavy as some of the other plugins we featured on the show, which will resize everything automatically and kind of just do all of the layout for you. You have to do a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more control with this. So that's about all we have time for today. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I'm at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. Also search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. Don't forget to rate us. And of course, if you'd like to get a free 30-day trial of Treehouse, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.